We appreciate the fact that each of us gave of our time this evening to be able to share this wonderful event with you, Byron. This is truly special for all of us. You know, when I think about Byron Janice, it's very difficult to put in words what a man has achieved in his lifetime. From a musician's perspective, I've been fascinated by your virtuosity. From a physician's perspective, I've certainly been inspired by your drive and your courage to move past obstacles. And as an individual, I've certainly been moved, in fact, I've been in awe of all that you do to inspire others, especially children facing the challenges of rheumatoid arthritis. This evening is a tribute to you, but I thought I'd begin by telling you a little bit about our institute. The Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute is really not totally responsible for this presentation. This is really the hard work of a number of people that have come together. A number of individuals from Yamaha Artist Services. I'd like to thank Hilary Jansen, Makia Matsumura, Hiro Muzutani, and especially Bonnie Barrett. I'd also really like to extend thanks to Bettina Klinger. She really was the hard driving force here. Without her, this would not have been possible. And a special thanks to Peter Goodrich. His advice and his guidance is absolutely priceless. The Institute itself has been in existence for about five years. Can we have the next slide? It's really focused as a nonprofit organization on two principal issues and that is education and research. Our focus, for the most part, is looking at ways that creative musical expression can truly change lives. And when you think about that inspiration again, I have to think about Byron Janice in terms of inspiring more people than practically anyone I know, not only in terms of music, but in terms of moving past incredible obstacles. If you look at the quality of life issue and you look at the projects that we, we work on at the Institute, you can get a sense of really where our dedicated focus is. It's truly about working with individuals and giving them an opportunity to realize the value of creative music expression as a healing strategy. And while music has certainly survived the test of time, and music listening is ubiquitous throughout our society. It's a fact that most people don't utilize music or don't play an instrument after they're uh, finished with high school or college. And one of the things that we would like to be able to do is create a sense of awareness of the power of music throughout one's life, whether it's for children, whether it's for teenagers or troubled adolescents, or even individuals facing life challenges like cancer. The value of integrating music into one's life is phenomenal. If we move ahead, we realize that our scientific investigations only represent the tip of the iceberg. We've looked at the biopsychosocial realm. We've explored the impact of playing a musical instrument from multiple perspectives. We've looked at seniors in long-term care facilities. We've looked at young people who have been incarcerated. And we're certainly working with other populations now, including a group of individuals facing the challenges of coronary vascular disease. And within the course of the next few months, we'll be publishing another paper that really explores the impact of music on none other than the genomic level. Yes, our DNA. And that's where the magic really happens. So I want you to know this evening, our DNA is going to be tingling because of you, Byron. We have a number of projects uh, that are going on right now, and you can see them above. Uh, we're working with cardiac patients from the genomic perspective with one of the Department of Defense Genome Labs at Winbur Research Center. We're looking at the integration of keyboard exercises for individuals with upper extremity strokes at the renowned Cleveland Clinic. What's fascinating about that project is this is for individuals who did not consider themselves musical previously. So imagine having a stroke and as part of your rehabilitative therapy, 
you learn how to play a musical instrument for the first time. And finally, we're working with a group of phenomenal young people at the Lincoln Park Performing Arts Center in conjunction with the world-renowned MIT Media Lab for the first time to try to alter the curve that progresses from mild cognitive impairment to full-blown Alzheimer's disease. And we're using a strategy of creative musical expression to try to engage parts of the brain that are not normally engaged. We call this neuroplasticity. If we go further, we have a number of projects that we're involved with presently. Uh, one of them is with a group called Daniel's Music Foundation here in New York City, and you're actually going to see a little bit more about them in just a minute. Another one is with a wounded warriors group called Soldiers Angels, and they're located in San Antonio, right across from Brooks Army Base, where unfortunately our wounded men and uh, women coming from abroad uh, wind up in the United States for triage to determine where they are best going to be treated in the course of their, their injuries. And finally, uh, the Lincoln Park Performing Arts Center at the Carl T. Brune Recreational Music Making Center. And I'd like to say a word about Carl for a second. He's the founder of the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute, and he's certainly the most prominent name in music and wellness in the world. And it was my privilege to have spent a decade working with him and learning from him and being inspired by Carl. In the past, creative musical expression served as one of the principal foundations of families and communities. Yet today, less than 7% of Americans over the age of 18 actually play a musical instrument. Despite widespread communications technologies such as email and the internet, people today tend to be more distanced from one another than ever before. Founded in 2006, the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute supports the notion that, as a society, we are in need of healing, a process that has been described as putting back into one's life what is missing. Perhaps that healing element is creative musical expression. By working with outstanding organizations around the country, YMWI helps bring music-making opportunities to many people with life challenges, such as physical injuries, disabilities, and cognitive issues. The Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute is dedicated to research and education by demonstrating the reactions and outcomes that playing music has on the human genome. One of the Institute's collaborators, Daniel's Music Foundation in New York City, provides free music programs to youth and adults with physical and cognitive disabilities. The Foundation's mission is to provide a comfortable, educational, and social environment in which members can learn and practice the joys of music making together. Last summer, members of Daniel's Music were invited to sing the national anthem at a Yankees baseball game, giving them a once-in-a-lifetime experience and memories that will last for many years. Another major initiative of the Institute is the Soldiers Angels program, Operation Harmony. Operation Harmony is a Soldiers Angels project that gives uh, uh, musical instruments to deployed soldiers, wounded soldiers and veterans, and gives them the ability to express themselves through music. This partnership includes several ongoing ventures, including the creation of the Carl T. Brune Memorial Music Center at the Soldiers Angels facility in San Antonio, Texas deploying the Clavinova connection to wounded veterans facilities throughout the United States, and a program that sends new guitars to deployed soldiers in need around the world. You know, and I'm Buddy Lee Dobertine. I was wounded back in uh, 2003, and music changed my life. When you're into music, you're not so depressed because you're actually being able to pour out some emotions on the guitar string. How you doing? Uh, my name is Charles Gibson. I'm a corporal in the United States Army National Guard. I was actually wounded in Afghanistan in 2010. And I've been working with the Clavinova Connection Lab for about seven months now. Just last month, Yamaha was proud to assist Soldiers Angels by donating guitars for a charity auction held in San Antonio. Yeah, right now, 
we've got a, uh, a guitar. We're going to give it to a uh, wounded veteran to, uh, to participate with us in our operation. Anybody in it? 400? 400? So. All right, one thing. So at this time, I'd like to bring up Lori Frazier from the Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute. While the auction, of course, raised funds, it also helped to raise awareness of what music can do to help lift spirits and heal the bodies of our wounded warriors, both home and abroad. Yamaha's advances in remote learning and music-making technologies have also provided some unique opportunities for Soldiers Angels. Hey, everybody who's watching, I want to introduce you to Aaron Robertson. Uh, tell them where you are and who you are. I am currently in uh, Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. I'm the targeting officer for First Cavalry. Division. Program specialist Lori Fraser was able to give a keyboard lesson via the internet from her home in Tucson, Arizona to a soldier stationed in Afghanistan using a Yamaha digital piano donated by YMWI. Now our men and women serving in remote and even dangerous places can still experience the healing power that making music can bring. The Yamaha Music and Wellness Institute builds on Yamaha's long-standing commitment to being a socially responsible company through research and dissemination of the findings throughout the medical community. Our knowledge of and passion for music and how it affects the human body is now creating real opportunities for healing and growth for those less fortunate and for society as a whole. Thank you.